This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. One of the ways to track the growing interest in electric cars is to look at all the investment that's going into making EV components. A Canadian company called Inmotive designed a two-speed gearbox for EVs. Even though electric vehicles can operate with a one-speed transmission, Inmotive says a second gear extends range by 7 to 15 percent and improves acceleration by 15 percent. That allows for a smaller battery, which cuts cost. The transmission itself only costs $150. A Japanese company called NIDEC just finished building a factory in China to make electric motors for EVs. And now it's going to invest nearly $2 billion to build a factory in Serbia to make them too. It will open in 2023 with the capacity to make up to 300,000 motors a year. You may have already heard that Foxconn, the Taiwanese company that makes most of Apple's products, is coming out with its own EV skateboard called MIH. It will have a solid state battery and will be available in 2024. Foxconn says it is an open source hardware and software platform which lowers the barrier of entry for other developers to get involved in the EV industry. And could the skateboard be the one that Mercedes-Benz ends up using? Actually, this skateboard was developed by Chinese automaker Geely. Like the Foxconn skateboard, it's an open source platform, and Geely wants to use it for all of its brands like Lincoln Co., Volvo, and Polestar, and maybe Mercedes-Benz. Geely owns almost 10% of Daimler, the parent company of Mercedes. Sharing the skateboard, which costs $2.6 billion to develop, across as many brands as possible, would drive down costs significantly. Volvo has ambitious plans to boost EV sales. By 2025, it's aiming for 50% of its sales to be fully electric, with the rest hybrids. And in order to reach that goal, the automaker is making investments to design and develop electric motors in-house. It just opened a new electric motor lab in Shanghai that will mainly focus on developing electric motors for vehicles based on its SPA2 modular architecture. In addition to that, the company already has an e-motor lab in Gothenburg, as well as battery labs in Sweden and China. By bringing electric motor development in-house, Volvo says it will allow engineers to fine-tune them so they're more energy efficient and improve their overall performance. Where is the car key? I don't understand. Which hole has the car key in it? Come on, I don't want to be late to this. You're killing me, man. The all-new Elantra with Hyundai Digital Key. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Ford is getting ready to roll out its hands-free driving system called Active Drive Assist. It will first be available in the 2021 F-150 and the new Mustang Mach-E. Customers can order the system now, but it won't be activated until the third quarter of next year via an over-the-air update. Ford expects to sell more than 100,000 vehicles with Active Drive Assist in its first year. It comes standard on higher-end models, or it's available as a $1,500 option, which means it will generate around $150 million in revenue in its first year. Active Drive Assist allows for hands-free driving on highways and major roads, that have been mapped. It doesn't seem like a day goes by without a headline for someone working on a new robo-taxi or passenger drone service. But currently, there's no rules or regulations in place to govern these mobility solutions. So a number of companies and experts are banding together in an effort to change that. The Commission on the Future of Mobility was set up to modernize policy and regulation around the way we move people and goods. Companies like Qualcomm, FedEx, Goodyear Tire, and Hyundai have already joined. Even former Ford CEO Jim Hackett will co-chair the commission. The group hopes to propose a new mobility framework in 2022. 
the Hyundai Group must really like designer Luke Donkerwolka. He joined the company in 2016 and eventually worked his way up to chief design officer, taking over for the legendary Peter Schreier. But in March, Donkerwolka abruptly retired for health and personal reasons. Now the Hyundai Group has announced Luke is back and it even created a new position for him, chief creative officer. In the new role, Donkerwolka will collaborate with the group's various design studios on their development and design communication for concept vehicles. Not only does that include Hyundai and Kia, but also Genesis and its dedicated BEV brand, Ionic. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, and by Hyundai. We've been saying that EVs with traditional looking grills will look dated faster than EVs without one. But one thing struck me while watching the reveal video for the new GMC Hummer EV. I think in the next five years or so, any vehicle with a grill is going to start looking out of place. EVs don't have an engine and therefore don't need a big opening at the front for increased airflow. And that's coming through in the design of many new EVs. And without the need for traditional ICE components like an engine, transmission, and exhaust system, we're starting to see electric vehicles with much different form factors than we're used to. The Jaguar I-PACE, Tesla Model X, and Honda E come to mind. In the near future, we'll also have the Lucid Air, Cadillac Lyric, and Nissan Ariya. Once all these vehicles are together on the road, everything else is going to look like that person that still dresses like it's the 80s. We think this could actually help speed up the adoption of EVs. No one likes feeling left behind, especially when it comes to fashion. But that's not all. For the same reasons, we also think this will kill the giant grill fad. If you don't need one and it looks dated, why would you put a big grill on an EV? We bet you see more vehicles like the Infiniti QX Inspiration concept that uses lighting and design elements to create the effect of a grill. And there's a lot of different ways to develop a brand identity going down that path. We know vehicles catch on fire, whether they're powered by gas, diesel, or electrons. But with EVs being the new hotness, they're grabbing all the headlines, which is not going to help with adoption. One of the causes of the fires is leaks in the battery cells themselves. And leak detection experts Inficon recently came up with a new way of testing battery cells even after they're filled with electrolyte. Here's how that process works. The mass spectrometer that we're using is not that much different uh, as far as the principles of operation. Now, what is different is how we deliver the gas sample because what we found is electrolyte has certain uh, viscosity and volatility uh, properties that make it tough to sample at atmospheric pressures. So the real development was taking our already robust uh, quadrupole mass spectrometer uh, and outfitting a system that could, at the correct pressures and under the correct conditions, deliver a sample to be analyzed. Um, Sean, the other long development was the calibrated leak to give uh, metrology. That was probably the bigger challenge of the development because we developed a calibrated leak uh, with the electrolyte material inside it. And that was challenging because if we, you look at, again, the properties, viscosity and uh, vapor pressure of the electrolyte, it will clog leaks unreliably. That means that the leak will be open and then the leak will clog. The leak will be open, the leak will clog. And for calibrated leaks, uh, for metrology, for benchmarking, for, for quality audits, you want a consistent signal. You want something that's consistent day to day that you can use to challenge a machine or get a quality audit done. And coming up with a calibrated leak based on electrolyte, that was pretty challenging. So the mass spectrometer that we have uh, has been around for many years. You may see them in uh, refrigerator plants, freezer plants, they're kind of the industry standard for refrigerant leak detection, end of line automotive assembly for AC systems. So we took something robust and well-known, 
but we had to create a system around it to give the exact pressures, the exact sample condition, and we had to uh, meet the challenges of that calibrated leak so our customers could have metrology behind what they're measuring. Check out that entire interview if you'd like to learn more about leak detecting and leak testing of battery cells. But that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching.